Hello and welcome to SDK TV, powered by Data Meaning and brought to you by Darren Holmblad. Today we're going to talk about customizing the MicroStrategy Portlet Authentication. This is part one of a part two series. The MicroStrategy Portlet Authentication is a little different than the out of the box MicroStrategy Web Authentication. In the web architecture, you can leverage what is called a ESM to provide single sign-on workflow to your end users. Now this ESM is not available when you access your MicroStrategy web environment through a portlet. The workflow is a little bit different. Even though the workflow is a little bit different, you can still use any of the out-of-the-box MicroStrategy authentication types. MicroStrategy portlets will read user information stored within preferences or a credential vault. Instead of using the ESM, the MicroStrategy leverages its task architecture to create a user session to be used within the portlet. That task is the get session state task. When customizing the MicroStrategy portlet authentication, it's very important that you understand the query flow for the authentication and for data retrieval. So initially a user will request a portal to serve them with a portal page. Credentials are retrieved from the portal server either through the default preferences or their credential vault and the user is then served with the portlets which they have access to. Now, if one of these portlets are the MicroStrategy portlet, that MicroStrategy portlet is designed to execute the MicroStrategy get session state task call. MicroStrategy get session state task call is a RESTful web service, which is basically a URL with some parameters that will send a request to the MicroStrategy web server asking it to authenticate a user. Once that MicroStrategy web server authenticates the user, the portlet is then returned a MicroStrategy session. The portal server then sends a request for MicroStrategy content defined in the default start page or as the default start page in the default preferences. MicroStrategy web then communicates with the intelligence server via XML. The MicroStrategy content is then sent to the portal server from the web server. Lastly, the MicroStrategy content is rendered to the end user. So as you can see, if you're familiar with the out-of-the-box workflow in MicroStrategy web, this is a little different. Um, the sessions are all handled by the get session state task call. So one of the ways that we can customize or provide single sign-on workflow to end users using the MicroStrategy portlet is by customizing the get session state task call. Now anytime you're customizing the workflow, it's very important that you understand the query flow, which is what we just went over. And it's also important that you understand how you can troubleshoot the customization that you are creating. One important tool that you know can be leveraged to track your get session state task call is a HTTP tracer called Fiddler. This is a application a piece of freeware which will pick up all HTTP traffic from your machine and you know display the parameters that are passed along with it. Using this you can test your get session state task call and you can even alter the parameters to see what behavior results. In addition to Fiddler, you can also use the task admin page to test the, the get session state task call as well as to see the parameters that are passed along with that task call. And later on we'll look at both of these tools. So customizing the MicroStrategy get session state task call uh, is what we're going to do today. So I'm going to show you a short demonstration of how to do that. Before we get into that though, I'm going to use the Fiddler tool. You can download this from the internet. It's so 
This is the interface. If you go to File, you can capture traffic. In addition to the Fiddler tool, as I said, you can also access the MicroStrategy Task Admin uh, using JSP or the, your normal URL and then at Task Admin. This page is useful because it shows you the parameters that are used with the Get Session State Task Call. So you can see here, these are all the parameters that will be passed. Now, not all of them are leveraged using uh, when you're using the portlet architecture, but some important ones to take note of are obviously the UID, the user ID that is going to be passed with the get session state task call, the password, as well as the project. Um, in addition to those, you know, all of these can be programmatically set by customizing the get session state task call which is what we're going to show now. So I'm assuming that all of you all have installed the MicroStrategy Web Customization Editor into Eclipse. If you need information on that, feel free to reference the MicroStrategy MSDL documentation for how to install that. So in order to use a custom get session state task call, what we're going to do is create a Java class, which I've already created, and extend the get session state task call. Once we've extended this get session state task call, we can then override the existing get session state by going into application settings, tasks, and then finding the get session state task call. So once we find the task call, we're going to want to right click and click modify class. So this is the class that is going to be used when that get session state task is executed. So we're going to put our custom demo get session state task call in here and click finish. So now that we've extended the get session state task call, we're going to want to override some, you know, out of the box methods. The process request is the main method for this task call. And in this request, it's where we're going to alter the authentication workflow. So everything that is passed within the get session state task call, so all these parameters, are going to be stored within the request keys. Those request keys can be obtained from the context and then passed into a request keys object. So from these keys object, we can obtain the UID, you know, password, project, server, any of the parameters that are passed along with this task. So you can see here that I've obtained keys.getValue UID, keys get value password, and project. And right here, I'm outputting them. So these are going to be the default values that are passed through in that session. So let's go ahead and test that by clearing my console. So I should output the UID and password. So in the task admin page, we can go to Builder, Get Session State. We're going to want to choose XML for the envelope, XML for the content type. And we're just going to pass through the server. Project UID and password. Click update URL at the bottom. I'm going to copy this into another tab. So once I execute that, it then goes against our code. And you can see here the user is test the password is 1234 so that's what I placed inside the UID and password fields and I'm obtaining them from the request keys so why is this information important so since the get session state task call is used to authenticate users in the portlet architecture to simulate single sign-on we're going to need to programmatically 
authenticate these users. So for the example that I'm going to do today, we're going to have two scenarios. First being existing users. And if it's an existing user, we're just going to handle the request and log the user in. And the other scenario is going to be a brand new user. So if you have a MicroStrategy portlet and the end user can access that portlet with their LifeRay portal credentials, you may want to have them have access to MicroStrategy. But instead of requiring your MicroStrategy admin to go in and you know define the the user for every single LifeRay portal user, we're just going to go ahead and create a custom get session state task workflow and programmatically create a user based on what UID and password are passed through. So you can see here that we have overridden the get session state task all by modifying the class that's used for it. And when we execute the task using a URL, our custom code is hit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see if our custom code is hit when we use the MicroStrategy portlet. So I'm going to use an existing user that I know is found within my metadata. And when I return to full page, I am logged in, you can see as D1, and I can navigate to reports and execute them. In addition, you can see in my Eclipse that D1 and password D1 were passed through to my custom get session state task call, and the user was logged in programmatically. What if I authenticate with the user that, that does not exist in my metadata? So D1, D1 does not exist in my metadata. And I click Submit, Return to Full Page, and they're authenticated. Welcome D1, D1. And they can run reports. And you can see in Eclipse, The user was D1D1, password D1D1. So how exactly did I do that? So since we have access to the request keys, we can determine which scenario is happening. So as I said, we're either going to log in an existing user or we're going to create a new user. So if it's an existing user, we're first going to need to search the metadata and find out if that user exists. To do so I created a admin session using the MicroStrategy SDK and then I created a web search object. So the web search allows me to search the metadata for users. So I set the name pattern equal to my UID which was obtained from my request keys. I then set the search types to 8704, which I believe is users. And then I perform the web search. So if the folder size is greater than zero, then that means the user exists in the metadata. So in MicroStrategy, UID is a unique key. So I can assume that if the search returned a user based on that UID, then the user exists in the metadata. If the user does not exist in the metadata, then we can use the administrator set session to create that user programmatically. So what I did is I created a function called create user. I passed it the string user ID and the string project. And I created a new user using the factory 
object source get new object and I define the login name to a login name set login name and I returned a new user once that new user is returned I then save it to the metadata using a object source dot save and once that is complete I now have a user for both scenarios so if the user exists I get them from the web folder if they don't exist I create a brand new user once both the users are created, I can then handle the default request by calling super.processRequest. One more demonstration of a non-out-of-the-box user or non-existent user. I will hit submit. And you can see, welcome, this is a test. And you can see that my custom code has been executed. And we'll go into MicroStrategy Desktop to see that that user has been created. So you can see here, the user this is a test was created and now resides in the metadata. So by customizing the get session state task call, you can provide single sign-on workflow for users that exist in your metadata or don't exist in your metadata, or you can handle additional scenarios by providing access to multiple projects or by setting ACLs or additional security on the users who are accessing the MicroStrategy portal. The code that you've seen in this demonstration will be posted in a link on the video page. Please feel free to comment on the video if you have any questions. And look out for my other video on part two of customizing the, the MicroStrategy portlet authentication, which will cover the MicroStrategy credential mapper class. Thank you.